How you doing, Fulton County family? It's your brother, Lamont Rucker, and I'm here at the legendary Hammond's House Museum in the historic West End. And this is Reading Royalty. Good day, everybody. Welcome to Reading Royalty. I'm Lamont Rucker, and today we're gonna go on a very interesting journey of literacy. The joy of reading, the love of the written word embracing the voices of a variety of different people. People of color, young people, young boys, young girls, and even some young adults. Today's program is really to expand and encourage your concept of literacy, to celebrate the written word, and to find the opportunity in your everyday life to make sure you read every single day. Yes, every single day. Read, 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 and read some more. And reading can be fun. Reading is fun. Reading should always uh, be fun. Sometimes it's not fun, and that's okay. So even when reading isn't fun, there's a way to understand that it's important. It's a pr it, reading is important to your achievement. Reading is important to how you see the world. Reading is important to how you interpret other people's stories and appreciate other people's perspectives, other people's cultures. Reading will expand your knowledge of the world. In my opinion, reading even allows you to, to time travel. Reading allows you to use your imagination, albeit from someone else's words that inspire it. It really allows you to take yourself on a journey that someone else creating those images for you can't quite do the same as you can do by using your own imagination and your own skill and gift of visualization. Reading has been the gateway to my success personally and professionally. I wouldn't be a successful actor, educator, businessman, and community servant if I were not a very avid reader, a passionate reader, and uh, and a, you know, and a consistent reader. I think reading really, really requires consistency. So I want you every day, whether you're a child, an adult, an elder, even if you're an adult who struggles with reading, it takes practice. So kids, even if you're learning new words every day, if you're even still struggling with your alphabet, whatever it is, you're still learning how to put together uh, your grammatical rules and uh, apply things that you use and learn in school, this takes time and it takes practice. So the more you do it, the more often you do it, and the more you stay committed to doing it, you'll be able to do it at a very high level much sooner than you think. So stay with it, stay confident, believe in yourself, and embrace the joy and the discovery and the passion and the real value of reading. So today, I'm celebrating the royalty in you. I'm celebrating the royalty in all of our great writers that we're gonna to celebrate today and that I'm gonna to introduce to you today. And I'm celebrating the royalty of reading itself because I really believe it's a wonderful, beautiful, powerful thing, incredible gift and an incredibly instrumental tool. All right? So I've got quite a few books to share with you today. Here's a small handful of them and uh, so we'll start with a wonderful book uh, called Barbershop ABCs, written by Hosea Gibbs. Now, I met Mr. Gibbs at an educational conference right here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was very impressed by his commitment to education. Uh, he sets a very incredible positive example of what I know uh, black men and black fathers and teachers and uh, servants to their community to be. So we really um, gravitated to each other. He shared his book. I have multiple copies of this book that I've given as gifts that I've shared with other people. And he was gracious enough to give me the permission to share this book with you. So I'd love to read this uh, to you and read this with you. So it's called My First Class, Barbershop ABCs by Hosea Gibbs. And let's see who illustrated it. So what I always do when I get a new book is I look at the title, 
Sometimes what I then do is look at the back side of the book and there's a nice little summary. It'll give you an idea, kind of an overview of what the story's about. It might even tell you a little bit about the writer. You'll learn a little bit about the production company or who published it or produced it or put it together. A lot of people are what you call self-produced writers and authors or self-published uh, producers and publishers and they do the whole thing by themselves. They come up with the ideas, they write it, and they publish it on their own. And I believe Mr. Gibbs did that with this book. But it normally takes a team. And one of the other things that's important, as you see the little pictures of our little guy right here, there's what you call an illustrator. And an illustrator is who draws the pictures and creates the images within the book to help guide us through the story. So thank you to Nicholas Spinelli for illustrating Barbershop ABCs. Next thing I do, I go to the next page. And this page might just look like a whole bunch of unimportant information, but this is also very important. This is where you'll learn, even when it's not just an ABC book and some of the more advanced books that you're going to read throughout your life, this is where you're going to learn not only the title, but the copyright date who it's copywritten by or to, and other information about, about the book, all right? And then what a lot of people like to do is to personalize the book, and they put what's called a dedication and acknowledgement. So it's always some really nice input there, and you can see sometimes they dedicate it to their children, to people who've been very um, significant in their lives, sometimes to other educators themselves. So, uh, so Mr. Gibbs thanks his wife and uh, his wonderful kids. And as I said, he says, in general, I want to thank every teacher, barber, stylist, parent, and school everywhere for sharing the lessons in this book with the children in your life. So I encourage you to do the same. All right? So let's get started. So again, the name is Barbershop ABCs by Hosea Gibbs. Hi, my name is Bobby, and I learned my ABCs at the barbershop. Now, you can learn them too, like I did. All right, so here's our little Bobby, handsome little guy, right? Okay, so we're getting ready to go on a journey with Bobby, learning his ABCs at the barbershop. I go to the barbershop regularly too, sometimes I even cut my own hair. How you guys think I did? Did I do okay? I didn't go to the barbershop for this one. So if it looks a little lopsided, you know, you can blame it on me, not my barber. All right. A is for ask. My dad, Bob, says you should always ask how many people are in line in front of you. If you know how many people are in front of you, you will know how long you will have to wait before you can get your haircut. All right, so A is for ask. Now, we've got a picture of Bobby right here. And who do you think that is? You think that's Bobby's dad? Or is that the barber? There's a couple little hints. He looks like he has a comb, something like that in his pocket. His shirt doesn't look like a regular shirt. It kind of looks like almost like a uniform kind of shirt, or what some barbers call a smock. So this looks like this actually might be the barber himself. Matter of fact, oh, wait a minute. Let's see what Bobby says. He says, excuse me, how many people do you have? Ah, so I think based on these clues, I would think that this is the barber and not Bobby's dad. So he does exactly what it said over here, what his father instructed him to do, which is to ask, okay? So when you ask somebody something, that's a way that you very politely say excuse me, as he did. You show courtesy, you show respect, and you ask somebody politely for the information that you want. So that's what Bobby's doing here. B is for barber. I see my, oh, B is for barber. I see my barber every Thursday. Sometimes I even make an appointment. So Bobby is kind of looking at his calendar 
and let's see, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So he's pointing to Thursday on his calendar. All right, you all know how to read a calendar? That's another thing you'll learn how to read. See, literacy and reading pops up everywhere. So even before you get to the barbershop to practice your ABCs, you're reading and learning how to read calendars and all kind of other things around you. So, looks like he's going to make an appointment for the 15th of, not even sure what, oh, December. Look at that. All right. So it looks like he's going to make an appointment for December 15th for his next barbershop appointment. So B is for barber. C is for chair. I am not allowed to play in the barber's chair. It could be dangerous. Oh, yeah, see that? He's climbing on. Do any of you little kids climb on the furniture? I bet you probably do. But you shouldn't climb on the furniture, especially if somebody told you not to climb on the furniture. Just like Bobby, you got to follow Bobby's example. Don't climb on the chair, okay? It could be dangerous. <laughs> so, especially in a public place like this. Plus, the other thing about barber chairs that you might not know is they move. They can shift up and down. They spin around, all right? So it can be very dangerous. So when you get in the barber chair, you sit down, you sit still, and you prepare to get your hair cut because there's also sharp instruments that are going to be used to cut your hair, all right? This, is, this can also apply to you young ladies or even you young men or boys who have longer hair. There might be scissors and all kind of other electrical equipment that could be in the equation, and you don't want to get hurt. All right, so C is for chair. Look at Bobby, standing on the chair. He should know better. All right, let's see what's next. A, B, C, anybody know what the next letter is? Ha ha, D. D is for dog. Any of you like dogs? Anybody have a dog? I don't have a dog. My dog, Lucky is not allowed in the barbershop. The sign in the window says that I have to leave pets outside if I bring them with me, okay? So D is for dog. And here we go. Look at that. There's a cat. You got another dog, you got a chicken. There are no pets allowed in the shop. All right, looks like the barber again, right? See his shirt again? It's another clue, so it matches the other picture. I think that's definitely the barber. So he's reminding everybody, no pets allowed in the shop. So when you go to the barber shop, try not to bring your dog. All right, A, B, C, D, E. E is for edge. When I get a razor edge, my haircut lasts longer. I like the way my hair looks in the mirror when it's done. E is for edge. E, D, G, E. That's how you spell that. All right, so look at Bobby checking himself out in the mirror. And he says, I like my haircut. It looks good. It does look good, right? Always nice to be well-groomed and to take pride in your appearance. Also, getting your haircut is, can be healthy for your hair. So this isn't just about vanity. It's about making sure you keep your hair healthy and clean. So F is for fun. I have fun at the barbershop. Sometimes I watch people play games while I wait to get my hair cut. So let's see, what kind of games do we see being played? Oh, it looks like these two young men are playing chess. Cool. They're playing chess. And Bobby's sitting there kind of hanging out, watching them play chess, probably learning how to play himself. That'd be great if he learns how to play chess at a very young age. That'll be a cool thing for him to know and learn. So that's cool. You see the barber's back here. He's cutting his hair. And he doesn't have much hair on his head. Look at that. But he's got a beard. So a lot of people come to the barber shop just to get their beards groomed. I got a little one, too. Mine isn't that high. It's not that long. But I know a couple of my friends, they have really full beards. And they get them groomed and manicured and shampooed. And, you know, they go and get taken care of. So. Barber has what we call clippers or edgers in his hand, and it looks like he's grooming our brother right there. All right? So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G is for good. I meet new 
good friends like Todd at the barbershop. Yeah, so there's little Bobby. So looks like that's Todd right there. All right. See another barber back there cutting another young boy's hair. So that's cool. Kind of cool to make new friends, right? All right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. H is for head. My barber asks me to take my hat off so he can see my head. So see that little Bobby's like, oh yeah, <laughs> I guess if you want to cut my hair, you can't cut it through my hat. So he has to take his hat off. So the barber always likes to take a look and say, hmm, let me see that. Let me see what I'm working with. Okay, all right, cool. All right. I is for image. I-M-A-G-E, image. At my school, we must have a neat image. So my hair always has to be cut. All right? So that's another thing with Bobby. He's not only getting his hair cut because he likes it and because it's good for his hair, and he sets a weekly appointment because it's also a requirement for his school because they want him to be well-groomed and have a neat image. So he asks the barber, give me a regular haircut, please. All right. J. J is for job. My barber does his job well. He has lots of skill. He even taught me how to juggle. What do you know? Who knew that the barber also knew how to juggle. Check that out. That's cool. All right. So a barber is definitely a skill. Many barbers, they get trained, they get licensed, they have to practice, they go to class to learn how to be barbers. And then many of them do it professionally as a job. That's their profession. That's their occupation. They do it because they're passionate about doing, they're doing it because many of them really love to do it. And, uh, and I know a lot of barbers who make a great living. They have multiple barbershops, or they've even expanded their barbershops to be places where other businesses and other entrepreneurs can, can sell their products or their services. They um, not only cut men and boys' hair, but they do women's hair. They do everything from braids and locks and hair pieces and weaves and high cuts and low cuts. So being a barber takes a lot of skill. So um, it's actually something I considered doing at one point. Maybe I still will. Hmm. I got some time. And I had a little practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You decide. K. K is for kind. Oh, check that out. Got that word right here. K-I-N-D. Be kind. So K for kind. It's also here in Bobby's book. So my barber is very kind, and he knows a lot. He talks to me about all kinds of things. So check that out. Bobby's there just kind of hanging out, and while he's getting his hair cut, he's having a really cool, nice conversation. Let's see, what does he ask his barber? He says, do you know what's the biggest animal on Earth? That's a good question. And you know the answer to that question? Hmm. Another cool thing about reading, you come across new information all the time. Sometimes you read one thing, you find something out, or you come across something that you don't know, or that you're not familiar with, or that you've never heard of before, and you know what it inspires you to do? Is to go and read something else, or to look it up. Maybe you look it up in the dictionary, in the encyclopedia. Hmm. Encyclopedia. Some of you little kids even know what encyclopedia is? All right. Ask your parents, ask your grandparents. I'm sure they know. But before you just throw something in the computer or on your phone and just search it on the internet, what you used to be able to do is go to another book called an encyclopedia and you look up just about anything you wanted to know and it'll give you all kind of information. So why don't you all take the time to write that question down and at a later time, figure out the answer. And when you learn the answer, Share that with somebody else you know. Share that with another child or tell any of the people that you have that uh, look after you or take care of you or that teach you. 
tell them, like, hey, do you know what's the biggest animal on Earth? And they'll say, no, what is it? And you'll have the answer. Why? Because you read it, and you looked it up, and you researched it, and then you shared what you learned with somebody else. And I think that's dope. That's cool. And that's very kind. Yeah. I know. I'm being a little corny. How do, you, do you spell corny with a C or with a K? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess we smell my kind of corny with a K. K-O-R-N-Y. I'm corny and proud of it. K is for kind in this case, though. So, Corey, corny. <laughs> Look, I said Corey. So K is for kind, and I think Bobby is a very kind little boy. We've seen already throughout the story how nice of a kid he is. All right, there we go. Do you know what's the biggest animal on Earth? I wonder what that is. Huh, maybe a whale. Elephant? Maybe dinosaur? I don't know. Well, I guess there aren't any more dinosaurs, but there used to be. Good question. I'm going to go look that up. Next letter in the alphabet is L. L is for line. My barber takes his time to line my hair, and I have to sit very still. Okay? So lining your hair is when a barber kind of styles your hair and grooms it to give it some shape. See that? See these lines here? Like that, line my mustache right there. I think my beard even has like a little line to it. So sometimes even though naturally your hairline will do these things, what a barber does is takes his tools and he'll line it up for you more intentionally so that your, your haircut has nice shape and contour and strong edges to it. Okay, so L is for line. M is for mom. Sometimes my mom holds my hand in the barbershop. So not only does Bobby's dad and his father take him and tell him what to do and kind of show him what's the appropriate way to, um, to behave in the barbershop, sometimes Bobby's mom seems to take him. Look at that. Okay? Hi, Bobby's mom. How you doing? She's there and sometimes she brings him too. All right? Nice lady. All right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. N. N is for noise. Sometimes the clippers make a scary noise. I don't like it, but I try to sit there like a big boy. Oh, man, it looks like Bobby's got a little tear coming out of his eye. All right. Maybe it's a different barber that doesn't really have the same kind of familiarity with Bobby. Or sometimes the instruments, they do make an interesting noise. They all sound a little different, but there's kind of a common sound. And it doesn't work for everybody, especially little kids. So if you're little and you just started going to the barbershop and those clippers sound a little weird and they sound like something that you're afraid of, you don't have to be afraid. Be brave and hang in there you're not going to get hurt. At least nobody's going to try to hurt you. But they can be sharp. But you'll be okay. Okay? So N is for noise. O is for open. I try to keep my eyes open when I get a haircut. <laughs> look at it. He's got one eye closed and one eye open. He says, can I look now? <laughs> Sometimes... I've seen people do that before, especially little boys. They stand there, they sit there like this the whole time, and then finally at the end, they open one eye or the other to kind of look. And most of the time, the barber will bring a mirror so that you can look through the reflection of both mirrors and see the front and the back of your head and say, okay, yeah, I like that. That's cool. So O is for open. <laughs> I like these illustrations. They're good. P is for pay, P-A-Y. I pay my barber a little extra for his service, which is called a tip, when he does a really good job, okay? 
And there we see a picture of Bobby handing over a little money to the barber, all right? So a tip is something else that's also very courteous. So anytime you go somewhere and somebody provides a service to you, um, maybe it's getting your, um, you know, your clothes adjusted at something called like a tailor, or whether it's taking a car to get fixed by a uh, mechanic, or um, somebody comes by to cut your grass, or anything like that. Um, you know, somebody helps you with your luggage when you're at the airport or in a hotel. There's a variety of different ways. That's a courtesy that we call a tip. So it's really nice to be able to say thank you and give extra thanks to somebody for showing courtesy to you and for helping you in some way. And that's very customary in the barbershop. So anytime you go to get your hair cut or your hair done, you give your stylist or barber a tip, all right? So you pay them for their service and you give them extra money on top of that and say thank you, extra special thanks, okay? All right, Q is for quiet. Sometimes the barbershop is quiet and sometimes it's not. <laughs> Let's see what it says here. No one is talking today. Why is everyone so quiet? <laughs> That's right, but I can tell you something for sure. <laughs> A lot of barbershops are not quiet. A lot of hair salons are not quiet. <laughs> it is one of the places where people talk a lot and that's actually some of what's fun there's a whole culture that's connected to going to the barbershop especially in the community that I come from which is the african-american community our barbershops are one of the centers for commentary and uh, all kind of different opinions and people talking about again who they think is the biggest animal on the earth or who they think is the best baseball player of all time or who's the best basketball player of all time or they're talking about world history and current events that's where I learned a lot about black history that's where I learned a lot about what's happening in my community is because the men and the people in the barbershop are always talking they're talking and sharing information and people come in and out of the barbershop who are informing you of the things that are going on around you but it's really interesting to hear people talk amongst themselves. And some of the funniest things I've ever heard, and even some of the biggest arguments I've ever witnessed, have happened in the barbershop. So it's another reason why I think this book is so cool, because the barbershop is really um, considered one of our really kind of cultural landmarks and, uh, and a hallmark in our community. So I think that's really funny. I think that's part of the joke here, too was like, no one's talking today. Why is everybody so quiet? Because that's not common in a barbershop at all. R is for read. My sister Kennedy likes to read at the barbershop when she comes with me. So that looks like the adorable little Kennedy right there. And look at her. She looks like she's sitting there just kind of hanging out, chilling. See, there's so many opportunities to read. So you can go somewhere and anywhere you go, you should probably take a book with you. So if you only have a couple of minutes while you're waiting, uh, while you wait, uh, or while you're waiting, you can read a book. You can read something really cool. You can pick up a newspaper, anything. There's all kind of stuff going around you. You can read street signs, and you can read like the words and the letters on top of buildings and stores. You know, there's often things written on the street. There's so much information around you. You always have the opportunity to read all the time. But there are times like this, you might be like, man, I don't want to go to the barbershop with you. Like, what am I going to do while I sit there? Read. All right? You can be just like Kennedy and read. Okay, that's cool. Kennedy hanging out with her little brother. Okay, we're getting close to the end of the alphabet. S is for sweep. I love to sweep up the hair at the barbershop to keep it clean. Look at that. Bobby's such an awesome little boy. So he's helping out at the barbershop by helping to clean up 
All right. So the thing about it is, if you've never been to the barber shop or hair salon before, when people get their hair cut, at some point, their hair falls onto the floor, and there can be hair all over the place if nobody comes along to keep the place clean. So it's always cool when there's somebody who can help out. And guess what? If you're looking to make a couple extra dollars sometimes here and there, people might tip you by being helpful. If you volunteer at the barbershop, well, maybe you decide like, hey, can I come like two, three days a week between this time and that time after I come home from school or something like that? Yeah, then you can help out. You can make sure you're um, being of service and you can probably make a little money on the side. And you put that money aside, put it in your little savings, maybe a little piggy bank is what we used to call it when I was little. And then you can save up money to do all kind of fun stuff. Okay? And even better, buy yourself some other cool books. All right, so S is for sweet. I really like Bobby. He's a really nice kid. All right, T is for toy. My barber always has a toy for me when I get my hair cut. Well, look at that. Everybody's so thoughtful. This is the kind of community I love, the kind of community I come from, where people do very thoughtful things for each other. So look, we got Bobby being very thoughtful here, and then we've got the barber being thoughtful also to Bobby. And that's normally what happens. Courtesy ends up encouraging other people to be courteous to you too. We've got a little toy plane. <laughs> like this book. U is for unique. My barbershop has a unique place where we wash our hands. I have to be very careful. That's right. So also nowadays, it's even more and more important to keep your hands clean. You probably have a lot of people around you, even maybe you in this moment. Or as you've seen now, you've got people wearing masks. They're distancing themselves from one another a little bit more. And one of the other things that you're encouraged to do is to keep your hands clean. So Bobby's already understanding that that's very important. And even before we had to deal with pandemics like COVID-19 or things like that, hygiene and clean hands is always important. Okay? So that's what he's doing. Unique. All right? My barber shop has a unique place where we wash our hands. Okay? All right. V. V is for video. I often watch a video while I wait at the barber shop. Okay? So you can read, you can watch videos. Ha! Huh, look, I think this guy's taking a nap. He can take naps too at the barber shop. And we got this young man, looks like he's listening to maybe music on his phone. Okay? Got another little boy, and it looks like, and his mommy back there reading something together. So, variety of different activities that you can safely do when you're waiting at the barbershop. All right, so let's see. How far have we gotten into the uh, alphabet now? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T U V W, right? And then we've got a couple more left, and we're almost at the end of our ABCs. W is for wash. W A S H is how you spell it. I wash my hair after getting a haircut because my mom likes it nice and clean, okay? He doesn't look like he's all that thrilled to get his hair washed, but it's, it's a good idea because when you get your hair cut, there are going to be a lot of loose hairs probably still in and on your hair. So it's always good to wash it after you get a haircut. And then you brush it or comb it after that. All right. So X is for xylophone. Whoa. Is that a new word for most of you? I remember the first time I learned that word, I was like, that's a weird word to me. You know why? Because it's spelled with an X, but listen to the way it said, xylophone. That doesn't really look like that's how it should be spelled 
if that's the way it sounds. But that's the other thing you'll learn a lot when you read, is that some words don't always follow the same rules. They're going to be pronounced a particular way because of the way certain letters go together. So this word is spelled X Y L O P H O N E. And the way you pronounce it is xylophone. So here's how it's used in a sentence. Sometimes I bring my xylophone and play it at the barbershop. So this is what a xylophone looks like. All right. I think you'd actually have a lot of fun playing it. Have you seen a xylophone before? If you haven't, next time you see one, ask politely if you can play it. And then you'll see how it works and what it sounds like. I think it's really cool. I remember playing with xylophones a lot when I was a kid. All right, our last two letters of the alphabet. Y is for young. I learned so much from both the young and the old people in the barbershop, okay? So it looks like that's Bobby, and I think this is an older gentleman right here that he seems to be looking over at. Looks like there's another young man, a young boy back here with this other older gentleman who's older than him, but it looks like this gentleman is younger than him. So you see that? You're going to get a lot of different types of people in the barbershop who have a variety of different ages, young and old. And Bobby says he learns from both. And I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, you should learn a lot from older people. Y is for young. And our last letter of the alphabet is Z. Z is for zap. I have to sit still in the barber's chair or I might get zapped. <laughs> so <laughs> Bobby says, don't get zapped. So what do you think zapped is? It looks to me that something's happening over here in this haircut that's not supposed to happen. So what happens is sometimes in barbershops, there are accidents, things that weren't really planned. And sometimes that thing is that the clippers, the tools kind of get away from the barber for whatever reason. Sometimes you're not paying attention and you might make a really jerky movement or somebody's telling a joke or telling a story and you look over there and they're cutting your hair one way and then you turn and you look over there and it goes zent. I say zent, but that's a zap sound. All right. So that's how you get zapped. So that's Bobby calls it zap. I call it zent. But it's the same idea. So that's how you get zapped. So if you don't sit still, and if the barber, or if the barber's not paying attention, if you don't sit still, if the barber's not paying attention, you might get zapped. All right. So that is Barbershop ABCs. And what I think is also super cool about this book is Mr. Gibbs gives us all of our words again at the end. Okay? Here, is some more barbershop vocabulary, including the ABCs already mentioned that Bobby wants to share with you. So here's our little Bobby again. Okay, here's some of the tools that I mentioned. These are what we call our hair clippers. Here's our scissors, or sometimes they're called shears, okay, that are used to cut hair as well. So here's some more barbershop vocabulary, including the ABCs already mentioned that Bobby wants to share with you, all right? So they're gonna be the words in here that we already heard, and then they're gonna be some new words. Ask, barber, brush, chair, clippers, comb, cut. Now words that start with D. Dad, dog, die. Now E, edge, extra. Now F. Friend, fun, G, good, H, hair, hat, head, I, image, I-M-A-G-E, image, J, job, K, kind, L, line, M, mom, mirror, N, noise, O, open, P, pay, and pet. Q, quiet. R, razor. 
and read and rinse. S, scissors, shears, <laughs> still, sweep, T, tip, toy, U, unique, V, video, W, weight, wash, X, xylophone, Y, young, and Z, zap. All right, that looks like that is the end of our book, Barbershop, ABCs, by Hosea Gibbs. Okay, you like that one? I like that one. This is one of my favorites. All right, so we'll put that one down there, and we'll move on to our next book. Now, this book is another one I'm really fond of. And the reason why is because I really am always happy to see books that celebrate family, that celebrate the love of children, and also that celebrate um, fatherhood or motherhood, parenthood in general. And especially um, as a man and a father, I always um, gravitate to stories that celebrate fatherhood and healthy relationships between fathers and their children. So this is a book that I'm really excited to read because I learned about it a couple different ways. Um, but what was cool is I reached out to the author, and the author is the person who wrote the book, and he ended up sending me a nice little note. And he was very happy to share a couple copies with me. He even autographed a copy for me, signed his name inside, and he put a little note inside. So I'm going to read the note to you. It says, thank you for supporting I Will Be Here is the name of the book. Thank you for supporting I Will Be Here. This book serves to defy and eliminate the negative narratives of black fathers. Its purpose is to uphold and praise black fatherhood. Daryl Farley. All right, thank you, Mr. Farley. And I agree, very happy that you wrote this book, and very thankful that you shared this book with me. And now, I get to share this book with the beautiful fathers and mothers and children and families of Bolton County, Georgia. All right, so our next book, I Will Be Here by Daryl Farley. Oh, and look what we have here. Illustrated by Jessica, uh-oh, Here's a reading challenge. Let's see. Let's see if we can read this name together. C-O-S-M-I-C-N-I-N-J-A. And then the last name I can pronounce is Jones. But, hmm. Jessica Cosmininja Jones. I'm trying to sound it out so I can get it right. I don't really know exactly what it is. So to be polite, I'm going to say, illustrated by Jessica C. I'm just going to use the initial Jones. All right, so you see how I did that? Assuming it's a young lady by the name Jessica, if she were here, if I had a way to learn more correctly how to say her name, I would ask, but since I can't ask, I don't want to show uh, any disrespect or be impolite, so we're going to politely say Jessica C. Jones, okay, is our illustrator, all right? Written by Daryl Farley, I will be here. So remember, you open up the beginning early pages, and look what we have. We've got a beautiful picture of Mr. Farley and his children, and he says, to my sons, Mason Kari Hakim Farley and Hendrix Sule Osagide Farley, thanks for allowing me to be your father. This book is dedicated to the importance of fatherhood and upholding the black family. All right, <laughs> this is adorable. Look how tiny that one is. 
<laughs> Look at this guy. He's got such a huge smile on his face. I think he's excited to have a little brother. Okay. Our skin tones may cause others to fear, but black lives matter and we will always be here. All right. So here's a little illustration of the entire family. That looks like mom, dad, big brother, and little brother. All right? Black Lives Matter. Okay? Two. Second page. I will be here because I know how important it is for black fathers to be in the home. I will be here to witness all of your milestones. <laughs> this is a really sweet picture too, look at that. Looks like this is a picture of when the mom, her belly's looking a little big there, so I think that's when she's pregnant. So one of the things that's always cool that fathers do is they talk to the baby while he's still in mommy's tummy. So it looks like that's what he's doing. And just reminding his child that he'll be there, all right? He's going to be present and always be loving and supportive of his child. I will be here to witness your birth. I will be here to tell you I love you first. Uh-oh, losing my books. I will be here to change your first stink. <laughs> I will be here to bathe you in the sink. Look at that. <laughs> Babies are sometimes so small, or too small to wash in the tub. Instead, you bathe them in the sink. <laughs> How funny is that? Do you get bathed in the sink? Or have you ever been bathed in the sink? I bet you have. That's funny. I will be here. On your first day of school, I will be here to pick you up from carpool. <laughs> so some of you may know what carpool is. What a lot of families do is when children go to school, if they don't walk them to school or drive them to school, or sometimes maybe you get on a bus or a train to go to school, what families do is work together to take all the kids to school as a group. So they agree on a place to meet up or to get all the kids together and then to have them uh, taken off to school together, and then they agree on the location to pick them up. So that's what we call carpool or carpooling, all right? I will be here to teach you how to read. I will be here to teach you how to lead, all right? I love books like this that rhyme as well, because not only do you learn and it reinforces words you already know, but then you start to realize, oh, hey, those two words sound alike. That's kind of cool. All right. <laughs> I will be here when you fall. I will be here to help you stand tall. And I remember, oh, and I see a little tire over there too. It looks like a bicycle tire. And the little brother is over here with his bike. I remember falling on my bike really bad one time. I still have a really bad scar on my knee from when I was much younger. Yep. Not fun. But you heal up, you get better, and you learn how to ride a little safer every time. Okay. I will be here when you lose your teeth. I will be here when you can't sleep. <laughs> Look, it looks like this little person has got drool coming out of his mouth, sleeping so hard. <laughs> and this one's got a tooth missing. I will be here to show you traveling is key. I will be here to instill you can be whoever you want to be. So it looks like they're having a fun day on the beach. How cool is that? Nice to be able to travel as a family, to 
see other parts of the country, other parts of your city, your town, your state, your community. But if you ever get a chance to travel to another country, that's really cool too. Yeah. So, so many possibilities around the world and so many possibilities within you. I will be here to teach you. I will be here to teach you our black history. I will be here to make sure you get the picture vividly. Cool. Look, I see a little reference to Harriet Tubman. Here's our kids there reading along. Uh, that looks like it's a picture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Another picture here of Barack Obama. All in the same book. And there's so many other people in this book, I'm sure. Okay? So definitely learn wherever you're from and whatever your family looks like. You know, if you're brown like me, or if you're any other skin tone or skin color of your parents or your families come from whatever part of our beautiful world that they come from, learn about where you're from. Embrace your culture. Be proud of your heritage. Treat other people well and with respect, but feel absolutely wonderful about who you are, where you come from, and some of the great stories about some of the great people who've had an impact on the world and had an impact on your culture. So these are just three of the hundreds of thousands of people who have uh, been very instrumental to, uh, to black history and to American history and to the world. Champions, I will be here at all of your games. I will be here cheering your name. All right, looks like mom and dad over here encouraging our child over here who looks like they're playing basketball. All right. I will be here to teach you how to drive. I will be here to make sure you thrive. So you notice how as we go through the story, the children get a little bit older almost every page. So I think that's what's really cool about this book too, is it shows that the father's influence and the mother's influence and presence is absolutely important throughout the entire journey of, of, uh, of your childhood and as you mature. And the different things that you're gonna do and experience, and the different things that you're going to uh, be challenged with, you know, how the father helps you through that is, is important. And if for any reason you don't have your father in your life or in your home, um, you know, more than likely there are other really wonderful men around you or in your family or in your community or in your school or in your church who can also support you in a very similar way. So don't feel bad at all if you don't have a father in your home or if for any reason you don't have a mother in your home or the person who's like your mom or the person who's like your dad isn't um, your biological parent uh, for any reason. So families come together and are formed in many, many, many different ways. So we've all had to be creative and we've all had to be very understanding and accepting of the differences in how families are made and how some families work and how they take shape. So um, if you've got no dads or maybe you've got two dads or three or four dads for all you know. I've seen people who have multiple uh, dads for many different reasons. Uh, I have a goddaughter and we joke all the time that uh, she has uh, four dads. So, and that includes me, um, another godfather, her grandfather, and her uh, biological father. So we're all very active and committed uh, to be in there for her, but also in very different ways. Okay. I will be here when you're headed to prom. I will be here standing in awe with your mom. <laughs> wow, so this little boy is just maturing. So a lot of people, when they learn how to drive, they're about 16, 15, 16, when you start being able to get your learner's permit. 
or um, even your driver's license, which is basically or, and, and typically 16. And then by the time you're going to the prom, you're a senior in high school, at least a junior. So you may be 17, 18, 19 years old. So see how we start to progress from being really small, coming up through the younger years, and now as a teenager. I remember my prom. That was fun. I will be here when you set off to college. I will be here to help you spread knowledge. All right, look at that. Dad helping him pack up. So look at our young man. Looks like our young man has a little hair on his face now. He didn't have any hair on his face all the way back here. Look at that. He was still a much littler guy. And right here, his teeth are still coming in. But over time, you grow up and you have much more hair on your face. Look how much taller and stronger. Look, his legs are bigger, his shoulders are broader. Starting to get a little bit more hair on his face in certain places. The young man is maturing. And now he's headed off to college. So dad is saying, hey, no matter how big you get, I'm still here for you. And I will always be here. All right. I will be here when you walk across the stage. I will be here supporting you no matter how many miles you're away. So there, that's a whole other thing that parents and families are challenged with. Going off to college is a great thing, but then the kid's so far away. And even as a kid, you're like, oh, man, I miss home. I miss my family. I miss my friends. I miss the things that I know and the environments that I'm familiar with but no matter how much there's that distance when there's people that you love and people who stay committed and active in your life they'll always be there for you okay I will be here when you start your career I will be here to lend an ear so now it looks like our young man is developing into a young professional man he's got a job now He's got a college education. Wow, and then in this case, he's even got, he's got a suit on. Looks like he's maybe holding a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, you know, having a conversation with his dad. Oh, maybe that's the dad. Or is that the dad? That might be the dad, and maybe that's the young man. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing about illustrations as they go through a story. It helps you kind of interpret what's going on. But sometimes you're like, hey, which person is that? I will be here when you say, I do. I will be here crying, boo-hoo. <laughs> so a lot of people cry when they're at weddings. So all of these wonderful progresses and moments all these wonderful moments of maturity that the young man is going through. Oh, now I will be here when you have your kids. I will be here to make sure you're doing exactly what I did. All right. How beautiful is that? So now see how the pattern through the generations. So now the father who was present and actively involved and stayed connected to his son, he set an example and has encouraged his son to do the same for his child, all right? So this is the kind of healthy pattern that we always want to encourage. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's okay. We're all going to learn and do the best we can based on how our family looks and what our circumstances are and whether or not we always have everybody present that we'd like to have present. I will be here no matter how old you get. I will be here to make sure you never forget. As a black father, I'm here to stay. I will be here to watch you grow each and every day. So look at all the men growing up a little bit. So the little itty bitty child, now look how big they are. 
the dad is much older. He's almost, he, he's the, that's the son. He's almost the same age as his father was early in the book. And now look how much older that gentleman is. So this is the dad who now is a grandfather as well as a father. I love you so much, can't you see? Black fathers are important to their families. So there's what used to be just mom and dad, but now they're grandma and grandpa. And there is a, oh, that's kind of like the earlier picture. And now there's the son. Oh, it looks like there's another little person. How cool. The family continues to grow. All right. And that's the end. Okay? So I thought this was a really wonderful book to share, too, because it shows pride in being black, pride in being um, a father, the responsibility and joy of being a father, and making the commitment and saying it out loud to his children and even for himself and even to his wife and the mother of the children. I will always be here, okay? I think that's incredibly, incredibly important, is being present. Parenting is more important than paying a check. So for anybody in that situation, you know what I'm talking about. Be present, okay? I will be here. So thank you, Brother Farley, for sharing that story with us. All right. All right, so our next book is Stan and the Man by Stanley Tucker, illustrated by Tyrus Gaucher. Now this book is really special to me because I know Stanley Tucker and I think he's real awesome, man. And this is a book he shared with me that's a very personal book of his. And uh, Stan and I are very similar in that we really believe in the beauty and power of reading and literacy and he started an organization called Leap for Literacy, and he even has uh, a bus that goes around that's called the Read and Roll, which takes books all over the metro Atlanta area and shares them with children in schools and families. So um, this is a book uh, that I think tells a little bit of his own personal story, and I'd like to share it with you. Stan and the Man. From my mom, Eva, the most kind, the most selfless, most dependable, most hardworking, most faithful human I know. All at no charge. Okay. The man loved me before I knew this world. When I was born, the man gave me his name, Stanley Thomas Tucker. I think that he wanted to give me something I would always remember him by. Growing up, I wanted to be right by the man's side. The man was an entrepreneur. He started a car detailing shop. He called it Custom Car Care. I love to help the man out washing cars. Cleaning tires was my favorite. I really just love spending time with the man. <laughs> Look at him. The man was an excellent baseball player. He was offered a college scholarship to play. His love for the game was contagious. Oh, you know that word, contagious? We got a couple cool words in here. Entrepreneur. Contagious. One day, while at the plate, the man said, the ball is your target. If you want to hit it, keep your eye on that ball. The man was my hero. Instead of going to college, he joined the United States Army. He went to serve and protect our country. I wanted to be just like him when I grew up. 
on November 14th, the man and I said our see you laters. Before he left the house, that became the day I wished I had said, I love you. Later that night, I heard a cry I'll never forget. My mom told my sister and me that the man wouldn't be coming home. Sounds like something really sad happened. I felt numb. The following years were hard for my family and me. We missed the man. I missed him at home. I missed him when we drove past the old custom car care building. I missed him at every baseball practice. I hoped that he would be outside waiting to play catch. The man's love for the game of baseball stayed in my heart. One game while up to bat facing the toughest team in town, I heard the man's voice clearly. The ball is your target. If you want to hit it, Keep your eye on that ball. Strike one. Strike two. And then the final pitch. Back. 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 Over the fence, the ball flew. I hit my first home run. At that moment, I realized the man was still with me. That year, I led my team in home runs, and my team called me the Home Run King. Look at that, he with all his teammates. Throughout my life, I have learned that people are irreplaceable, but the experiences that we share with them can last forever. That's a nice picture of the two of them together right there, right? The man will forever live on in my mind, my heart, and in the name we share. I'm thankful for the time I had with the man, and I hope that he's proud of the man that I am. Staying in the man. One of the things that I think is also cool is I talked about some of the thoughts and feelings that are often not only inside but on the back of the book. So here, Mr. Tucker says, every day you are building the story of your life. Are you making others proud? Are you making yourself proud? Go live a story that makes others proud and most importantly, makes you proud. Stan Tucker. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. That was Stan and the Man. On to our next story. All right. Welcome back to Reading Royalty. Our next book is another book that I'm excited to share with you, and it's entitled You Are my sun shines born of my heart by winsome sinclair so i think very highly of winsome and i'm so excited that she wrote this book and thank you so much winsome sinclair for sharing this with me and with all of us uh, because what i think is super cool about this is how she spelled sunshines now normally when we use that word we're talking about the sun up in the sky which is spelled s-u-n-s-h-i-n-e talking about the sunshine coming from the sky but this is about these two beautiful little boys right here who are her sons and there are her 
sun shines s-o-n when we're talking about people we spell sun s-o-n so there are her sunshines i think this is a really wonderful book celebrating the love of her family and her children and these wonderful beautiful brilliant little boys that she has in her life and uh, tells a little bit of how they became a family and how special this family is so you are my sunshines born of my heart by winsome sinclair and hey look at that another little really wonderful personalized autograph for me love sharing my books with you all another intro page and there's a, another adorable adorable there's another adorable picture of her and her boys all right there's our publisher page it has first edition november 2020 this book is fresh off the press fresh off the press and here's her dedication for my supernatural sons micah and cairo my sunshines and all the blessed adoptive families that are born of the heart you all know any adoptive families are you maybe a part of an adoptive family or have maybe parents who were adopted i do i have some really wonderful cousins and nieces and nephews that are that are adopted i've got some really really wonderful people in my life who are adopted love it so hi my name is micah and i am six years old my little brother is cairo and he is four they call me batman i love playing video games all right so there's our buddy micah right there with his little game controller in his hand looking kind of focused hi i'm cairo i love dinosaurs micah is my big brother they call me elmo look at that dinosaur the dinosaur is huge Dinosaur is bigger than, uh, than Micah. I'm sorry, bigger than Cairo. See, I'm getting them mixed up. But wait a minute. I think we can tell the difference because I think Cairo looks like he's a little smaller and he looks like he's wearing eyeglasses. And Micah, who's the bigger brother, ah, has a little, his hair's a little longer. It looks browner and he doesn't wear glasses so that's how that's what will help me tell them apart throughout the story all right so let's see next page this is our mommy Somi, and she is the best mommy and she is boss she says she loves us more than anything in the world so that looks like Somi right there all right she looks like, just like somebody else I know. <laughs> we love our mommy this much. See the boys with their arms out really wide. We love our mommy this much. She says, we were made for each other and we are her sun shines. Mom says, we are blessed and God formed our family in a supernatural, non-traditional way. So anybody have an idea what she means when she says supernatural and non-traditional? Hmm? Anybody know how babies are made and how babies come to us and how they come through a mother's body, right? thing about it is some families might have children that didn't come from their body but they're still their children so something to think about we like to do fun things with our mommy like hiding our bikes in the park did I say hiding our bikes I think I didn't read that right we like to do fun things with our mommy like riding our bikes in the park See, that's an R, not an H. Riding. All right, you like to ride your bike? I love riding my bike. My bike is blue. Cairo's bike is red. We ride very fast, and Mommy watches us from the bench. 
There's Michael on his blue bike and Cairo on his red bike. And mommy's sitting in the park, relaxing, but keeping a safe, watchful eye on her little boys. Sometimes we dance and sing with each other. Mommy says our favorite music is old school. Who knows about that old school music? <laughs> Look at the boys dancing. Mommy in the middle look like she's getting her groove on too. What's some of your favorite type of music? You ever dance to your favorite type of music? I highly encourage you to do so. Dancing is fun, spins and expresses and releases a lot of good positive energy and love of music is very important too. Maybe just as much music as love of reading. We also love to eat. Food's important too. Sometimes mommy lets us help her in the kitchen when she prepares our meals. Tuna fish sandwiches are our favorite meal to eat. Mommy says I might be a chef when I grow up. Look at all three of them in the kitchen together. I used to always like helping out in the kitchen myself. After we eat, we love to help mommy clean up. She teaches us so many new things. We love being mommy's little helpers. Oh yeah, look at my guys. Remember, just like, uh, remember like Bobby helping out in the barbershop when we read barbershop ABCs? This is the boys being helpful around the house as well. I always say in one of the ways that I was raised, chefs don't clean. So if people show you the courtesy of cooking for you and preparing the food for you, what you do in appreciation is you make sure you do your part cleaning up. You clean the table, you wash the dishes, you sweep the floors and you clean the counters off and all that. So chefs and the cooks did the hard work of preparing the food and nourishing you and feeding you. And the least you can do is help clean up the kitchen and the eating areas afterward. So I really applaud Micah and Cairo for helping mom out. Mommy says we are the best helpers ever. Mommy takes us to school every morning. We like to sing along with her and the music on the radio. Cairo and I go to different schools. So why do you think Cairo and Micah go to different schools? Huh? Maybe because they're different ages and maybe they're in different grades. Do you have an older or younger brother or sister or cousin or something like that that's also in school and maybe you go to different schools. Maybe you go to the same school but you're in different classrooms and have different teachers. At night, mommy helps us with our homework. I am learning to read and use a laptop. We love to learn. Cairo tries to always copy me. Mommy says we are both super smart. I believe it. And one of the reasons why I think these kids are super smart is because they're always reading, always reading. Sometimes mommy takes us to basketball practice. She says the coach thinks I'm very good. All right, we've got the boys with basketballs and there's their basketball coach. We also love gymnastics. Cairo loves to do cartwheels. Mommy says soon we will start karate classes as well. well look at them. Oh, wow. He's upside down. That's cool. I think it's really smart to do things like this, to learn different skills and develop different abilities and to do things that keep you physically fit and active and healthy. That's very important. So learning martial arts and learning how to focus your mind and your body, the discipline that comes with learning sports like basketball or gymnastics or or martial arts forms like karate. Very good for how you develop physically, mentally, and spiritually and intellectually. Mommy says that we are very special. She says that we are her supernatural babies, blessed by God and born of her heart. Oh, that picture is similar to the other picture, but look how differently everybody's dressed. They're all dressed up. 
Mommy also says that she is glad that Cairo and I talked to God and chose her to be our mommy. Cairo and I love when mommy prays with us every night. This is how we talk to God. This is when we thank God for each other and all the people that love us. So do you pray at night or do you pray in the morning or throughout your day? You know, when I pray, I don't pray at night or in the morning, but I choose to pray every time actually that I prepare to eat. So before I nourish my body, I say thank you and I appreciate those who provided and prepared the food, but it's my opportunity to say a personal prayer to God and to the other people in my life and even some of the people in my life that are no longer here. So for me, the way I work out having a spiritual relationship is to say a prayer every time that I eat. That way I'm praying multiple times a day, no matter what. So that's just the way I do it. And you can choose to pray how you choose to pray and however you see God and what works for you. That's the beauty of faith and however you choose to do that. All right, so you'll find a way that works for you. Your family probably has already taught you some ways to do that. And if not, read and discover how you might do that for yourself. Very important. All right. So I like that picture. That's nice to see the three of them praying together. They say a family that prays together stays together. Mommy says that we are her sunshines and are especially loved by God and by her. I love how she's always affirming them and saying positive, loving, supportive things to them. We were born of mommy's heart through prayers. <laughs> Look at the two of them in the heart. God knew we needed each other and heard all three of our prayers. We are part of a big family. Mommy says it takes a village to raise us. Our village includes our grandparents, godparents, uncles, aunts, and cousins. We love our family. Look at their family. That's a cool picture of everybody. We are grateful that God answers prayers and made our dreams of having a family come true. Every night, we pray that God blesses other families to find each other the way we did. Mommy says, some families are traditional, but we are supernatural. <laughs> Say that word with me, supernatural. Say it real loud and proud, because I think we're all supernatural. The end. Okay, so that was You Are My Sunshines. some Sinclair all right so now this next one I think is this next one I think is really cool so this is a book that was written by a beautiful young lady whose parents are also friends of mine and her name is Sydney Wallace so Sydney wrote this beautiful book that she printed out and she illustrated herself and published it. How cool, right? So I found out about her book and I couldn't wait to get a copy. So now you notice this book is one, two, three, four, maybe four or five pages. Books don't have to be very long. They don't have to be long stories. Books and stories and expressive writings, creative writings, can be any length you choose them to. They can even be poems. I'm going to read a couple poems uh, later as well. But what I love about this is that this is, this is an extension of Sydney's imagination. Okay? So the fact that Sydney used her imagination to not only create the story, but write a book from it, I think is awesome. So anybody who has a story to tell, use your imagination and go for it, okay? So let's read 
Caroline and Her Fish Named Cheez-Its by Sydney Wallace. Once upon a time, there was a seven-year-old girl named Caroline who wanted a goldfish named Cheez-Its. But her mother said no because Caroline was too young to take care of a fish. Her mom said it takes a lot to remember to feed it, clean the fish tank, and add fresh water, and that made Caroline sad. So Caroline went to her bedroom and she sat there thinking. Then she remembered that her uncle owned a pet store, and the pet store had lots of fish. She went to her mom and asked her if she could volunteer at the pet store. And her mom said yes. Caroline was very excited. So that's Caroline sitting there. And these little bubbles, these are like little thought bubbles. <laughs> so she's thinking, come up with ideas. And she's thinking about fish. How cute are these illustrations, huh? All right, next page. The next day, Caroline visited the pet store and asked her uncle if she could volunteer to feed the fish. And he said, yes. She remembered to feed the fish twice a week and she found a pretty goldfish there and named it Cheez-Its. But one day, Caroline got a cold. So she called her uncle to tell him that she was sick. She was scared that she might get fired, but her uncle told her that she will not get fired and that he would feed the fish for her. But Cheez-Its missed her and she missed Cheez-Its. So here's a picture of Caroline. That's her uncle. And that's her, oh, that says, achoo. What do you think that means? Is she sick? What does she have in her hand? Is that like a cup of soup? and maybe a thermometer. Oh, she's sneezing. She says, achoo! <clears throat> Excuse me. That was rude. I should have covered my mouth when I sneeze. You're supposed to cover your mouth when you sneeze. The next week, she came back to her uncle's pet store and she fed all the fish. She worked very hard for the next few weeks and her uncle noticed. He also noticed that she liked Cheez-Its a lot and he wanted to get Cheez-Its for her as a surprise. But he also knew that Caroline's mom told her no goldfish because she was too young to take care of one. So Caroline's uncle told her mom how hard she has been working and her mom said she noticed too. So Caroline's mom told her uncle that she could bring Cheez-Its home. She couldn't believe her wish came true, and Caroline and Cheez-Its became the best of friends and lived happily ever after. The end. So look at Caroline, and there's her little orange goldfish, Cheez-Its. All right, isn't that cool? Already an author, seven years old. Love it, way to go, Sydney. Okay, we're celebrating a lot of young ladies and girls right now, which I love. So I have a couple books about this young character right here. And this young lady's name is Maddie the Mathematician. Now, I met the author of this book, who's also an educator herself, and her name is Dr. Nania Joseph. So she has created this character and these books are illustrated by Al Danso. And um, one of the things I also love about this is because in addition to being uh, an artist and educator and businessman myself, I'm actually a lover of math. I specialized in math, I taught math. Um, I have a degree in uh, computer science and information technology. So I'm a very like mathematic, quantitative, technical like person. And um, so anything that's about math and science and physics and things like that, I love it. So as uh, soon as I found out about this character and these wonderful books that Dr. Joseph had written, I couldn't wait to, uh, to celebrate these books and to share a little bit about Maddie, the mathematician. So let's dive in, okay?
This one is called Maddie, the Mathematician, The Adventure Begins, written by Nania Joseph, Ph.D., illustrated by Al Danso. And there's Maddie, looking proud, her cape flowing behind her. She looks like a superhero. We got all these supernatural children that we're reading about. Love it. All right, there's again our inside title, or our cover page, title page with the publisher information and other details, websites and social media sites that you can go to to learn more about the story. Oh, the dedication. I like reading these, can't you tell? I would like to dedicate this book to my daughter, Zenobia. I want her to know that mathematics is all around us and it has the potential to open many doors. Learning the language of math is the key to success. Remember not to let the challenges of mathematics prevent you from trying. I want you to continue to do your best and always think before you do. Maddie was a very curious girl who always thought numbers were special. She would find numbers everywhere she went. Maddie would discover numbers in her room as she counted her fluffy animals. She also noticed numbers in the kitchen when she counted eggs to help her mother cook. Look, she's got all kind of numbers in her heads. All kind of numbers in her head. Even on the way to school, Maddie would find numbers. She counted the people, buildings, and cars. Maddie would find numbers everywhere. One day, her teacher, Ms. Burkett, told her that numbers were a part of the amazing system of mathematics. Maddie's eyes grew big with curiosity. She just had to find out more about math. That day in class, Maddie looked for numbers all day. She saw sets of numbers, digits, and symbols that represented numbers. Maddie noticed the class pest, Samuel, playing with a set of blocks. She noticed how he arranged the blocks in various sets. Maddie put on her observation eyes and noticed that Samuel was creating a pattern. Hmm. You see a pattern in these blocks? I see red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Hmm. You know what else I notice? That's one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, five blocks. How many blocks do you think would be next? So I think this is Samuel. So let's see what Samuel did. He placed one red block, two green blocks, three blue blocks, four red blocks, five green blocks, and six blue. If the pattern continued, Maddie knew she could figure out what the next set would be. She stood there thinking about the pattern. Hmm. She knew that the next set Samuel would represent would be seven red blocks. As Maddie watched Samuel place red blocks on the carpet and continue his pattern, Maddie became excited. At recess, Maddie was really excited about her discovery. She decided to observe some more math. She noticed there were six swings and two slides on the playground. She also saw that there were two seesaws and one jungle gym. The playground was full of numbers. At the end of the day, Maddie thought about all her observations. She saw numbers everywhere. Did this mean that math was everywhere? When Maddie got home, she knew what she wanted to be. It was her goal to become a mathematician. From that day forward, she introduced herself as Maddie, the mathematician. Ooh. Hi, I'm Maddie, and math is my thing. If you like math, let me hear you sing. One, two, three, math is for me. 
four, five, six. Math's a quick fix. Seven, eight, nine. We do it every time. Next comes 10 and we can solve it again. Now, let's begin our math adventure. Thank you, Maddie. Oh, and look at there. There's a picture of the beautiful and brilliant Dr. Joseph, who says, lifelong learning is the key to success and overall social development. Okay. So she hopes that Maddie helps children have fun with math and understand that mathematics is all around. There's Maddie the mathematician. So she said, let our adventures begin. So <laughs> look what I have. One more adventure from Maddie. So again, Maddie the mathematician, a closer look at sharing written by Nania Joseph, PhD, illustrated by Al Danso. Right, and there is our title page, the publishing information. All right, there's our dedication, which is the same message as before. And here is our beloved Maddie the Mathematician. So let's see what this adventure is about. Hi. I'm Maddie, and math is my thing. If you like math, let me hear you sing. One, two, three, math is for me. Four, five, six, math's a quick fix. Seven, eight, nine, we do it every time. Next comes 10, and we can solve it again. Now, let's begin our math adventure. I like that song. You can sing that song anytime you want. One, two, three. Math is for me. Four, five, six. Math's a quick fix. Seven, eight, nine. We do it every time. Maddie loves sharing with her friends. This morning, her mom made a batch of her award winning marshmallow chocolate chip cookies. Maddie smiled with excitement. She couldn't wait to take the cookies to school so her friends could have a taste. When she arrived, the class could smell the sweet chocolate marshmallow cookies as she entered the door. Everyone was gleaming with excitement. Even the class pest Samuel, who never seemed to like anything, wanted a taste of those cookies. Ms. Burkett told the class that Maddie's cookies would be saved for snack time. When snack time arrived, everyone's mouth was watering. Your mouth ever water, ever like anticipate eating something or the taste of something and you can just you can just, you can taste it before you even eat it. It's just, oh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Makes me want some cookies too. When Ms. Burkett opened up Maddie's marshmallow chocolate chip cookies, there was a huge surprise. Maddie's mother had only made a dozen cookies. Hmm, what does a dozen mean? When Ms. Burkett saw this, she told the class, oh no, boys and girls. There's only one dozen cookies and we have 24 students. What are we to do? I don't understand. Do you understand? Why is that a problem? A dozen cookies, one dozen cookies. Oh, you know what? This is a unit of measurement. So in math, you're going to run into this all the time. There's certain words or certain symbols or certain ideas that represent a unit of measurement. So you'll have a word that represents more than one thing. So one dozen actually means 12 things. So a dozen equals 12 things. So one dozen cookies means 12 cookies. Now. 12 is less than 24. That's a smaller number than 24. So if you've got 24 students and only 12 cookies, then that means, let me see, 24 is the greater number. So if I subtract 12 from 24, oh wow, that's interesting. I get 12. So if I did that in the up opposite order, 24. So if I said 12 plus 12 equals 24, 
those two statements, those two equations, would actually say the same thing. But one is subtraction when there's a minus sign, and the other is addition when there's an add symbol, an addition symbol. But they both say kind of the same thing. They represent some of the same measurements of information. So that means if there are 24 students, but there's only 12 cookies, if 12 people get a cookie, then that means there's 12 other people who won't get a cookie. And that's not fair. We have to make sure everybody gets a cookie because that's sharing. Whatever there is that's out there, everybody should have equal access. And to be fair, everybody should be able to get an equal amount. I wonder what Maddie's going to do. No, let's see. At first, the class did not see the problem. See, neither did I. Ms. Burkett asked, one dozen cookies are a lot of cookies, right? Maddie raised her hand and asked, um, Ms. Burkett, aren't one dozen cookies enough? Ms. Burkett explained to Maddie and the class that one dozen cookies were only 12 cookies. She showed the class as they counted the cookies together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 12 cookies. As Maddie sprang to her feet, she yelled, oh no, this is a problem. Maddie counted the children in the class. She had 23 friends. Maddie whispered to herself, how is everyone going to get a marshmallow chocolate chip cookie? Maddie thought, and she thought, then suddenly smiled. She had a mathematical idea. Maddie noticed that the cookies were shaped like circles. At home, when she shared with her brother Michael, she gave him half of her cookie. Look at that. So when she gave him half, it made one cookie become two pieces of a cookie. <laughs> Maddie knew she could cut a circle in half and make two parts. Ms. Burkett said, Maddie, smiling joyfully, may I show the class my idea for solving the problem? Maddie approached the board and drew 12 circles, each about the size of an orange. She then drew a line through the middle of each circle. Once Maddie was done dividing the circles into halves, the class pest Samuel said, Oh, I get it. Samuel confidently walked to the board. He counted each half in his screechy parrot voice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. The class all cheered. We got it. Maddie's math brain figured out that drawing a picture could help solve the problem. Ms. Burkett was very happy with Maddie's mathematical thinking. She divided each marshmallow chocolate chip cookie in half and gave each class member one. She saved the last cookie for Maddie and handed it to her. Maddie saw Samuel and divided the cookie in half. Samuel smiled and said, thank you. Maddie and her mathematical thinking saved the day. All right. So you see, even in the most simple of situations and any time you might run into a problem, if you stop, you take your time and you think about it, you say, hmm, let me stay calm. Let me not get upset. Let me not cause any conflict with anybody. I think I might be able to come up with a solution if I just put my mind to it. And if I work together with the other people around me to come up with a solution. And a lot of times using math 
or using your critical thinking or sometimes just by listening and thinking with your heart, you'll solve the problem. So Maddie the mathematician once again saves the day. All right. So embrace math too. And there's reading in math. You want to do well in math? You focus on your reading proficiency, that'll help you a lot, okay? I love math and I love reading. So Maddie the mathematician is now, has become one of my favorite characters of all. So there's a summary of the story on the back. Maddie the mathematician begins her math adventure with a perplexing problem at school. With the help of her friends and the class pest Samuel, she figures out the solution to the math problem. Join Maddie on her math adventure as she solves the problem and saves the day. All right? I'm gonna go have me some cookies. See you in the next story. Hey family, how you doing? Listen, you see I made a quick little change. We got a nice little uh, interesting shift in scenery. We're still in the beautiful Hammonds House Museum in the historic West End. And now I'm going to share some, uh, some other unique reading selections. Got a couple of poems, um, a couple short selections from actually also a book that I contributed to. And I've also got some inspirational quotes that I wanted to share with you. And um, I hope that these other unique sources of content will inspire you to read other things and to appreciate uh, some of the other ideas and images and, uh, um, and stories that other people are telling uh, through some different types of books, not just uh, children's books or story books or, or things focusing just on early childhood. So for maybe a little bit more of our mature readers, our young teens and young adults, I think the selections that I'll have for you are things that you're gonna be able to identify with a little bit more um, and as I do more of these types of projects for you and, and for the county, um, you know, individually as well as through other organizations, namely um, my nonprofit that I co-founded with some other uh, really beautiful brothers from around the country, uh, two who are also in Georgia and actually who are Morehouse graduates uh, as well. Um, our organization is called The Black Gents and we'll be doing a lot more of this work in the future. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, continue to be a part of this work as we move forward because um, this is very important, very important to tell all of you, again, find your voice, find a way to utilize reading and literacy and the creative spirit within you to do things that are positive and profound and that will contribute to the solutions uh, that you see are needed around you. So this first selection is from a book called, uh, it's entitled Jaundice, and it's a collection of poems by Daryl Allardyce. Um, Daryl Allardyce is a writer and educator born and raised in New York. His work has been produced in New York, Boston, and Louisville, Kentucky. He has directed and been a part of many poetry series in local pubs, libraries, and many arts institutions. Um, his daughter, Zuri, um, also happens to be my cousin, and his beautiful wife, Joy, uh, is my auntie, one of my aunties. And um, unfortunately, um, Dara Allardyce is no longer with us in physical form. He has become one of our ancestors, and uh, as I belovedly called him, Uncle D, um, was a really passionate and committed educator and one who was always writing, always encouraged other, um, always encouraged other people to read and, and write and express themselves and to be as learned and uh, exposed as possible. So in the tradition of um, you know, shining love and light on our elders and our ancestors and those who have continued to give us their love and brilliance through the oral tradition and written traditions, um, I share a couple of his poems with you and uh, as a shout out to him and a shout out to all the other beautiful poets and teachers and artists uh, all over. So this first selection is of course entitled Zori's Eyes for Zori. 
My daughter's eyes are everywhere. They take you in, then swallow you. My daughter's eyes are everywhere. They sometimes stare at you. They sometimes stare at you. Ask questions of your thoughts. Sometimes they scare those thoughts away until they are gone, until you are thinking only of her eyes. Her eyes, they scared away a grizzly when it borrowed some air from her dream. Now, I am scared of the bear who has her eyes in my nightmare. Her eyes, they talk back to me. They talk back to me, probing my doubts like an oscilloscope, scaring me, scoring my thick glass skin with her eyes. She is tough with her eyes. She is five. Through the international page of her mother's newspaper, her eyes burn holes through the remains of the dead tree, awakening scurrying squirrels and rumbling frog eyes. Advertising the dark brown of her eyeballs floating on the full page of a world bleeding against the whiteness of her sclera, demanding I join her world. Dr. Seuss or Langston will do. The cat in the hat will borrow her eyes for a rhyme or two or three or four. Gliding through the edges of poetry that is still Harlem, Crown Heights, Pittsburgh, and Boston. Her eyes, they see everything. Her eyes, they can do anything they want. They have. So wasn't that beautiful? I love that one. Zuri's Eyes, written by Daryl Allardyce. There's so many in here. There's so many that I could read to you. I mean, one of them no more or less powerful or significant than the others. A couple of them are really short, really brief, and others are pages long. So just like some of the books and stories that I mentioned, a poem could be this short. That's two different poems. Look how short they are. Or a poem could be this long, where it takes up two, three, three and a half pages. Check that out. So if you want to read more books um, and more books of poetry, I highly encourage you. And if you're interested in learning more about Daryl Allardyce, uh, this is a great book of poetry to, uh, to study as well as to add to your collection. All right. So that was Zuri's Eyes by Daryl Allardyce as one of the selections from the Jaundice Collection of Poems. All right, so now, so next I'd like to read just a couple short passages from a wonderful book called Reach. Reach, 40 Black Men Speak on Living, Leading, and Succeeding, edited by Ben Jealous and Trabian Shorters. So there's a couple brief um, sections of their introductions, which I think give some really wonderful insight on some great work that's being done. And uh, I just think, uh, you know, it's very powerful and, and intelligent, you know, language. Um, this book is a collection of stories from, as I said, 40 different men, and I'm actually one of those men. So I'm featured in this book as well. Uh, along with some other names that you might know. Um, unfortunately, a couple of brilliant men that are uh, no longer with us, uh, namely Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry, who is a, a legend in this country and definitely um, in metropolitan Atlanta. Um, so you might also notice uh, and recognize 
Louis Gossett Jr.'s name. You might recognize um, John Legend's name. You might recognize uh, Van Jones. You might recognize uh, Isaiah Thomas. You might recognize um, Bill T. Jones, Reverend Al Sharpton, um, Reverend Raphael Warnock, as well as uh, even Talib Kweli. So um, there's a number of men in here that I think you're going to find very interesting, even though you might not know their names, uh, they might not be as famous or as popular, but they're equally, if not more brilliant and doing really powerful, incredible work. So um, I celebrate the Shaka Senghors and um, Eddie Connors and Rashid Shabazz and uh, Horace Madison, uh, Sean Dove, uh, man, Steve DeBerry. There's so many, so many super dope men in this book. So uh, again, the thing about reading for me is also books like this, work like this, the people that you learn about, the work that you learn that people are doing, the struggles and the challenges and the adversity that people have been through. Uh, I think books like this are extremely important because um, you know, they show that as successful as all of these men out, as, as, as successful as all of these men are, they've all been through some things and they didn't get there by themselves. So no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, again, as successful as these men are, they needed each other or there were other people in their lives that helped them get through and get to where they are now. So some of Ben's thoughts are as follows. Despite the rapid advances of technology, young men of color today often lack access to positive images and stories about others who look like them. With the exception of stories about one black man who lived at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the reporting we see about men of color on the nightly news often leaves little good to imitate. Occasionally, the images of our greatest heroes do break through. Black and white film reels of Martin Luther King Jr. and Thurgood Marshall flicker in classrooms on rainy days across the country. However, the grainy images place these icons in another era, in a time when the battle seemed perhaps simpler, that outcomes predetermined. Their lives are remembered in a way that makes them so flawless, so impossibly angelic, that their stories and achievements seem unattainable. This is a book of everyday heroes. It is a collection of men known and unknown, most of whom have grown up since desegregation, all of whom have faced challenge and all of whom have lived their lives in ways that are relevant to each of us. It is offered as a gift of gifts. Each man featured in these pages sat down with us to tell his story so that it could be combined with the stories of others and handed down from parents godparents, aunts and uncles, older brothers and peers, to young men seeking to find their way. My hope is that this book will empower you as my family's stories empowered me with examples of black men who have overcome great challenges to do even greater things. I encourage you to read these stories, to ask your elders for their own and ultimately empowered with that knowledge to live a life of meaning that will leave a legacy for generations to come. Thank you, Ben Jealous. Trabian Shorters writes this. When black males are portrayed everywhere we look in a negative light, our brains, no matter our race or sex, are prone and primed to believe that this portrayal is correct. Even the norm, in fact, it's not. Not by a long shot. People, however, need more than just statistics to change their perspectives. Statistics are often rejected if they do not reinforce pre-existing beliefs. On the other hand, stories involving relatable characters are experienced by the mind. When we hear a story, we put ourselves in that person's shoes for a minute. The story gives us an opportunity to reconsider our perspective and position. And we tend to choose the perspective that leaves us looking the best, even if that means discarding a mistaken position from before. This is a book of stories about men whom you know, but perhaps have not been perceiving fully. 
They are normal black men. They are good men. They are imperfect men, flawed, with struggles just like yours and decisions just as good or just as poor as some you've made. Every one of the men in this book is also a community builder, someone who wants us all to live in a more caring and prosperous world. We encourage everyone of all races and sexes to explore life through the eyes of these men. Once you do, it will become very easy to see brothers like these in your day-to-day -day life. We believe in building upon positive people, positive aspirations, and positive opportunities to tell the truth to one another and work together for a better future. So again, a, a book that I've been very excited about um, and uh, you know, please explore the books that exist um, all around that are talking about people doing positive things that are building community in all the various ways that they're building community. All right, so I wanted to focus on some things that were positive, that were affirming, and uh, you know, really encouraging and um, perpetuating healthy, positive images. And this is a book that I think does that very well. Okay. This is another book that I really thought you'd find very interesting, and it's called Provoking Thoughts, Volume One. 101 Inspirational Quotes for Daily Life by Natasha A. Pierre, all right? And again, I was able to get this as a very personalized copy, okay? And she says something really sweet. She says, Lamont, I'm so proud of you. Lots of respect as well. So I'm really kind of personalizing some of my um, connection to some of these people in these books, not for any... Um, promotion of myself or uh, of these particular books uh, or texts or writers per se, but really just to share my personal connection and my value in the words and the, um, the really incredibly loving, powerful, positive intentions of, of the uh, formation and creation of these books that, that I'm sharing. So I just encourage you to if you uh, are moved to uh, support some of these books and writers yourself, great. But whatever it is, read. Find what speaks to you. Find um, the books that speak to love, that speak to light, that speak to positivity, that speak to hope, that speak and encourage excellence, that speak to the beauty inside of you, the light inside of you, and the desire that we all have deep down to do something really wonderful in this life. Uh, not only for ourselves, but more importantly, also for other people. You know, it is often said that if your dreams only include you, they're not big enough. All right. And if your dreams scare you, then most of the time, you know, they're uh, they might be right on point. Because sometimes the things that were were actually, uh, I think, divinely created to do um, can seem really big and can seem uh, overwhelming. But uh, um, you're capable, we're all capable. We just have to have the courage uh, and sometimes the support and encouragement to do it. But uh, um, you know, you're not a mistake and you're here to do something really powerful and really profound. So continue to uh, stay committed to finding that light and how God works through you. And uh, for Natasha, this is one of the ways that God has done this for her and through her, uh, which has taken some of the adversity and some of the challenges that she's been through and she's taken them and shaped them and they're really powerful lessons and words of encouragement and empowerment and I'd like to share a couple of those with you all right so she's numbered them 101 inspirational quotes so I'm going to share a handful of them that I think you'll find pretty cool all right so this one is number number 18 where you want to go must speak louder than where you have been. Provoking thought number 48. An effort a day keeps failure away. I like that one. An effort a day keeps failure away.
Provoking thought number 68. Live from imagination, not from memory. Live from imagination, not from memory. Provoking thought number 72. Spending too much time focusing on what is wrong leaves little time to focus on what is right. Spending too much time focusing on what is wrong leaves too little time to focus on what is right. Provoking thought number 88. Loving others as yourself can only work if you are very good at loving yourself. <laughs> That's a good one, too. And I have one more. Provoking thought number 96. Motivation lasts for a moment. Inspiration lasts for a lifetime. Motivation lasts for a moment. Inspiration lasts for a lifetime. And those were some provoking thoughts from Natasha Pierre. Volume one of 101 inspirational quotes for daily life. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for reading royalty. May you continue to find the royalty that lives in you, that lives in others, that lives in all of our stories, and continue to read. Love to read, find passion for reading, find your voice, share your voice, tell your story.